Praise the Lord, everybody. Well, welcome back to this week's edition to Church Alive. I am Pastor David Whitaker, and this is Pastor Anthony Stowe. We are the pastors here at Hope Tabernacle, and uh, if you are joining us and you don't know where we are, we're uh, 18961 Freeport Drive in Montgomery, Texas, and we'd love to have you come visit us whenever all this junk is over. Praise the Lord. Amen. Welcome. Welcome. Hallelujah. Well, I thought <clears throat> this week we would talk about uh, so much going on in the world and so many questions that people are asking, and I thought a good question, Brother Stowe, would be, um, and it's a logical question, and that is, uh, if God loves us, why do we suffer? Have you ever heard that asked? I've heard it quite a bit. I'll bet you have. Going to the hospital, Brother Stowe spends a lot of time in the hospital visiting folks. Yeah, that's one of the first questions they ask. Yeah. Is why am I sick if I'm a Christian, if I've got God in my life? Yeah. So that is a good topic. There's a lot of, uh, I, uh, I, to me, a, a atheists will ask that question <clears throat> as a means to discount the Lord. And, um, and I, I'll, I'll just say this. I was an atheist. And um, <clears throat> anytime you have a question that is seemingly unanswerable about God, then that's just a validation for you to not believe in God. And, you know, so and there's lots of questions that are valid questions that are that are hard to answer. And a lot of times we don't know the answer. And so if a, if, if a person who does not have faith is asking a question to the person who has faith and that Christian says, well, I don't know. Well, we need to know. Yes, that's good. Because there is an answer. Yes, sir. One thing I tell people, because they'll come to me and ask me about a certain incident in their life. We know, say, why did God let that happen? And my, my question to them is, well, if you're going to blame God for that happening, then you've got to give God credit for all the good days in your life. We can't just pick and choose certain yeah, that's events. Right. So, that's good. So that's one of my answers. <laughs> that's a good answer. Anyway, when I was, uh, was thinking about this uh, a few years ago, Brother Stowe, and um, I came up with, uh, I started searching the scripture and trying to find answers for this. I know you've got some here, but we'll get to that. But um, I thought about, if you look at the big picture, <clears throat> I have, and I know you have too, ministered to people who are suffering a loss of a loved one, maybe of a child, and um, a spouse, you know, a, a, a baby, uh, that, that's a hard time. That is a very difficult time. And I, I'll say this to you, the, our audience, <clears throat> that um, when somebody is dealing with that very real, intense pain, I don't go into this. I, I tell them that there is an answer. Yes. Um, but we're not going to talk about that right now because the main thing is just to get you through this, yes. this uh, the mourning process. <clears throat> and the only thing that's going to help us through the mourning process is time. And uh, so if you're there and you're, you're really struggling or you've, you have uh, experienced a, a loss uh, recently, I mean, within the last couple of weeks, um, this answer honestly may not come as much comfort to you. <clears throat> but um, it still is, um, If you, you, you have to look at the big picture. Yes, sir. And so um, when you look at the big picture and, and you begin to look at this, uh, we've got to realize that uh, we're, we are not living in God's, or we're not, God is not living in our world. Uh, we're not in existence and living our lives and God's there. Brother Stowe, we talk, you talked about this earlier about he's, he's not our vending machine where we just rely on him to give us everything, everything. that we want. Yeah, yeah, everything we want. Yeah. And, and we're here living and he's just our supplier. <clears throat> now, we all know that God supplies all of our needs according to his riches and glory. And we've got all those scriptures. Amen. But we really do need to look at the big picture. And that is, and again, it's sometimes hard to swallow, but we weren't created so God could shower us, shower us with gifts and blessing. We were actually created... Uh, for his glory and to serve him and to worship him. The, the Bible says, um, uh, let, me, let me see if I get down to it here. It says, um, uh, everyone called by my name and created for my glory. This is Isaiah 43 and 7. He says, everyone called by my name and created for my glory. I have formed him. Indeed, I have made him. The psalmist said, uh, Psalms 102 through three, it says, uh, know that the Lord is God and he is the one who made us and we are his. We are his people. We are sheep in his pasture. 
So this is his creation. <clears throat> so um, we, we've got to consider the fact that God has created us for him. You not know, him for us. Huh? It's not the not other way, for him us. for us. Now, yeah. I, 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 you got me, I think, well, wait a minute. I thought God supplies all of our needs and God gives us manna from heaven and all of those things. And, and that's true. But we've got to go back. God created Adam and Eve in the garden. Not so he could protect them or to shower them with love and gifts and blessings, but he created them to worship him and to love him. And they had a choice, Brother Stowe. This is the big thing, is God gave them a choice of whether they would love God or not. So uh, if, they, if they chose to love God, then they would have been in, you know... All their needs supplied. All their needs supplied. There would, there would be no suffering. There would be no problem. There would be no uh, death, no sickness at all. But Adam chose to not do so. That wasn't God's choice. That was Adam's choice. Now, the Bible says that uh, Eve was deceived, mm -hmm. um, believed the serpent, but Adam was not deceived. He knew full well that he was going to sell us down the river. When I say us, I mean his children. So his, his children, his grandchildren, and all of those following were going to suffer death. He knew that, and he made the choice to, to suffer. And so he made the choice to walk away from God. So you've got this garden opportunity here and if he's god says if you stay right here and worship me and uh, we'll have this great relationship and you won't ever have any pain but if you step outside of that garden <clears throat> then you will suffer and die one simple rule one simple rule that's right yeah. so so then the atheist will ask the next logical question brother stowe and that is well if god loves us why did he give us a choice that's a good question yes it, and is. it deserves an answer well, here's the answer. Again, God created us to love him. How are we going to love him if he doesn't give us a choice? Because if we don't have a choice... It would be forced labor. Yeah, it would be right. forced on us. We would be like robots. Yes. That wouldn't be love. So true love is only, is only produced when you have a choice. Just like we talked about earlier, if you have a wife or husband or whatever, <clears throat> you choose them over everyone else. That's right. Even the vows, we talk about this, the vows, you know, if you go to the preacher, he gives the vows and they, the, the husband and wife say vows back to one another. Yes. Uh, they say, hey, do you forsake all others and choose this person? And they say, I do. What are you saying when you say I do? You're saying I forsake everything else, all other people in the world, and I choose you. That's true love. I'm making that I'm choice. Huh? I'm making that choice. Yeah. Imagine a shotgun wedding or something. That's not true love. That's no. forced. <laughs> yeah. So God has to give us a choice so that we can choose him. Own free will. We're living by our own, our free, own free will. Our own free will. That's right. So it, God loves us, right? Yes, so sir. here's what happened. So here, here's God created us. He says, here's the, here is uh, the bliss and, and paradise. And if you step outside of that, then you, you're, you're on your own. You're going to suffer and you're going to have pain. Adam chose to do that. He chose to walk away from God. He chose a life of sin and suffering for not only himself, but for his children. So here is the truth. So then you think, well, then where's the love of God? Where, where's the love of God come in, you know? Well, here's where the love of God. This is the truth about God's love. If God loved us, he would choose you. He would choose us over everything else. And he has. Because yes. God has a choice also. When we walked away from God, Brother Stowe, he could have walked away from us. But he didn't. Amen. He stuck with us. And, uh, and if God truly loved us, he would still be able to choose, or we would still be able to choose uh, a God over death and sin, right? Yes, sir. God still gives everyone today that choice still, even though we walked away from him in the garden and all of us are born in sin and shape and iniquity, we still have a choice today that we can either choose him or not choose him. You think about that. It's only the love of God. We forfeited our right to choose, but yet he gave us another gave chance. Us the right anyway. So that's the mercy. That's unmerited favor. Yes. So if God loved you, he would make a way for you to escape this sin of death, right? Yes, sir. If God truly loved us, he would make a way for us to escape this and get back into the graces of the Lord. And guess what? Good news is he has. He has. Praise the Lord. So here's what the Ephesians 2 and 1 says. He says, and you... 
That's us. He made alive. When? When we were dead in trespassing of sin, in, once we, in, uh, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince and the power of the air and the spirit who now works uh, in the sons of disobedience, we walked among those who were um, uh, of the lust of the flesh. We were fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And he says, you were by nature children of wrath, just as others. So we were trespassing in sin. We were dead in sin. We were fulfilling the lust of the flesh. If God truly loved us, he would make a way for us to come back. Guess what? The next verse says, but God, but God. who is rich in mercy. Yes. Because of his great love, hmm. which he had loved us, he has made a way for us to come back. So if God truly loved us, and he does, he would take our penalty for, of death and sin. He would take our adulterous heart and he, would ne- and he would take it to his cross and nail it to his cross. He would die our death for us so that we could be in back in covenant with him. And I would say that is the love of God. That is loving God. That's exactly right. We wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for that second opportunity that he gave us. Right. That's the truth. So what, what, I was, we were talking earlier that uh, that's my take on it. That if when people say, well, if God loved us, why do we suffer? I think about the cross. I think about Calvary. I think about you got to think about the big picture. You think about, OK, we're here to worship the Lord. We're here to serve God. We walked away from God, but he still allowed us to come back. We can go back to the scripture about the, the prophet who he said, you need to marry the, 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 uh, the woman who's going to cheat on you. Oh, Hosea. Hosea yeah. and, and, and accept her back. I mean, you go through that story and you think, how could a man ever take this woman back again after all that she did? Mm-hmm. And God did that for us to real, to see the unmerited favor that he, get, he did that for us so that we can come back to him. By his stripes, we are now healed. We can go to the throne room of grace and pray and, and, and we can have access to him that we've never had before because of his, his great love for us. So... Yes, sir. But we talked about this before. Sorry, I'm taking up all the time, but you're good. Um, you go to the hospital a lot, and <clears throat> and and you, uh, Brother Stowe. If you don't know Brother Stowe at all, but he's you. You suffer. Yes, sir. I've been suffering most of my lifetime, and you know a lot of people say, "Well, why did God allow me to be bear, um, Excuse me, born into a home uh, that was had problems. Yeah. You know, why, why couldn't I just have a loving mom and dad and that got along and they didn't get divorced and why did I have to have sickness? And one thing that I, I've learned that when you just being in this world, there's going to be problems, whether you're yeah. a Christian or whether you're not a Christian. The good news is as a believer, yeah. we've got hope. That's right. And so uh, even through all the times looking back, a lot of people are astounded and say, why do you have such a good attitude? It's because I know that my hope is in Christ Jesus. I was 19 years old. I'm in a street gang. I'm carrying a baseball bat. I'm angry at the world. I want to fight cops. And the next thing you know, I, I, the Lord fills me with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, changed my whole attitude, changed my spirit, changed my heart. That old heart of stone came out and the heart of love, he put it in there. And from that day on, to me, suffering wasn't a problem. It was a privilege oh, wow. to be able to suffer because Christ suffered horribly. If we yeah. read about Christ, yeah. he suffered horribly. So that's one reason it makes it easy to me. I just think about the Lord and what he endured just to give us the right to go back to him, even though we forfeited that opportunity in the yeah. garden. Well, that's powerful. But you, you're because of your sickness in your body, God, for whatever reason, has not chosen at this point to heal your body. Yes, sir. But you're certainly a lot further down the road than the doctor said you would be. Oh, yeah, definitely, <laughs> so definitely. The Lord's keeping you alive, right? Anyway, yes, sir. But you still... But not just alive, but thriving, mm-hmm. being able to help others, to care about people, to show love to my family, to be there for them. There's a lot of things I can't do, but I'm going to focus on what I can do. Yeah. A lot of people take sickness or tragedy, and they turn it in. It becomes a stumbling block. But what I've decided to do with the help of grace of God was to make it into a stepping stone. I'm going to step above this. I'm going to rise out of this. It's only for a season. My wife and I have a very good saying that we have. No matter what comes our way, whether we're laid off from work, we have sickness or something happens, uh, this too shall pass. Yeah, right. And we know that God is going to walk through the valley with us. And that's what makes a difference. Yeah, that's good. 
So you, you, like I said, God has not chosen to heal your body. You still, just like the Apostle Paul was thinking about that. We don't know what was wrong with him. So commentators will say different things that he was blind or he had some kind of a sickness or some kind of, but he said he had a thorn in his side, whatever that was. Yeah, sure. That, that he, that he felt like God uses, he, he felt like his pain or his suffering was instilled by God, that, it, that, that God was allowing this to happen for him for his benefit. Yes, sir. So we were talking about this earlier, that even though we chose the life of sin and we walked out of the garden, we walked out on God. All right. And we and now we're suffering. You know, he, he, he could just as easily say, well, you know, you made your bed lay in it. That's right. But he takes the suffering now and he turns it for our benefit. I've seen more people come to God in the hospital bed. They're laying there. They're at their rich end. They have no other resources available. And all of a sudden, they realize, hey, if I don't look up, I can't go any further down. I think when people hit bottom is when it's really easiest to look up and, yeah. and look towards God because that's when he can really shine in your life. I had to let go of a lot of things I was wanting to hold on to. But the good news is once I let go, uh, he's raised me up. And now instead of being someone who's uh, known for, for being ill, uh, we're known as being an overcomer. And that's what he wants all of us to be, yeah. is to be an overcomer in spite of our situation. That's right. In spite of our situations. Well, Brother Stowe, I don't know what time. We're probably out of time. But why don't you close us in prayer? Say a blessing over our congregation and our folks here at Hope. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this topic today. And I, I thank you, Lord, that we're human enough to, we, when we, we don't want to suffer and we don't like pain and we don't like being sad and having sorrow in our life. But we know that that's just a part of life when we're living on this earth. But we're so thankful today that there is a God and your, his name is Jesus Christ and that you came into our situations, past your situations, all of our situations, and you've allowed us to overcome. And it's not by our might, but it's by your spirit. It's not by power but, or, nor might, but by your spirit, saith the Lord. And I thank you for raising us up out of a bed of affliction multiple times. Jesus. Lord, we look forward to good things happening in our lives today and every day because we've read the book. We know what the book says, and we can be excited about it. We can be ignited about it, and we can be delighted about it, even in the midst of pain and sorrow. And we give you all the praise for the opportunity today in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Bless this audience, and we pray that you bless our meeting next week. God bless in Jesus' name. God bless you, and have a great week. We want to offer the opportunity, if you have any questions that you would like to submit, and whatever it is that you're wondering about concerning Bible and God and following the Lord, please do send that in under your comments, and we'll take a look at those questions, and we'll be prepared to try to answer your questions in the next episode. So thank you for that. We look forward to hearing uh, your questions and finding the answers that we're seeking. God bless you.